Jesus is the light that came and brought hope. He brought purpose. He's the light that pushes back the darkness. Amen, church? And today, Jesus is that light. I want to read to you John 8, 12. It says, then Jesus spoke out again. I am the light of the world. The one who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. 1 John 1, 5 says, now this is the gospel message that we have heard from him and announced to you. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. Come on, church. That's something to be happy about this evening. Jesus pushes back the darkness. The gospel is the good news, and that good news is that God is the light that pushes back the darkness. Amen? Amen. As you're holding that candle in your hand, understand that candle, while it might be a small little flame, a small little light, the very nature of light causes darkness to cower, causes darkness to flee. The very nature of these lights shining on me right now are causing this stage to be lit up. Everywhere that light is, darkness can't be. Did you hear me? Everywhere light is, darkness can't be. During the celebration, I, wanna, I want to remind us the power that Jesus has over darkness. And some of the darkness that Jesus has power over is the darkness of depression. You know, Christmas is one of those times of year where many people are actually statistically the most depressed. They're most reminded of the money they don't have, the family they, that they're in disarray with. They're oftentimes reminded of all of the materialistic things they wish they had and looking at their brother and their friends and saying, man, what's my, wife, what's my life worth? You know, 50 million Americans today are struggling with depression. The world we live in today is full of heaviness and everywhere you look, people are trying to medicate their pain. They're trying to meditate through their pain. They're trying to find some form of spirituality that's going to help push back the darkness that's in their heart and in their mind. Going through the season of darkness and depression and feeling such heaviness, and it's so common to happen. Maybe you're here today and you're feeling like, honestly, I'm kind of, kind of fighting through darkness in my mind, darkness in my life. I want to let you know that Jesus is the light that can push back that darkness. Jesus is the light who will remove and eradicate depression from your life. You know, what's amazing is that, you know, people, they oftentimes will go to alcohol or drugs or some form of spirituality to try and numb the pain. Like I said, to medicate or to meditate into a different place. But when you drink alcohol or when you partake in drugs, that only numbs the situation. It only makes it numb for a moment, but the moment that, that that substance is gone, the depression is back. The depression is there again. The moment someone who tries to find enlightenment through spirituality and trying to discover themselves, they're limited in their ability to deal with what happens around them. You know, spirituality is like a moon. The thing about the moon is it's a counterfeit to the real light. All it can do is reflect the sun. It's only a faint image of what the real source is. You might be here today and you might feel like Jesus is just that other spirituality, that little bit of light that I need. But Jesus is more than just your moonlight. He is the son of God and he is the source of light and he removes all darkness. He doesn't just come in and light your pathway, but he comes in and he brings complete light where there is darkness. Darkness cannot stand where Jesus is at. You know, darkness can't dispel darkness. And you know, the thing about the moon, you only can see the moon when it's dark. But when the sun is out, you don't see the dark, you don't see the moon, all you see is light. 
Jesus is the light of the world. He is the source. What makes Jesus different than all of the other remedies is that he actually eradicates darkness. I want to read to you Isaiah 53, 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and he carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Jesus dispels the light of depression and Jesus is the cure, not just the medication. He is the cure. He is the source. He says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, come to me who are all weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Jesus has power over depression. And I want to tell you that Jesus not only has power over depression, but he has power over despair. Now, some people who are in our season of depression or going through this season and feeling like, man, well, I know another way that life can be dealt with is if I just remove mine. They think that if I just remove my my life from this world, I won't have to worry about depression. But let me tell you something that's more sad and heavy and more depressing than depression, and that's eternal despair. You see, leaving this world doesn't fix the issue of darkness. Leaving this world has really very little effect, if not only makes things worse when it comes to the area of darkness. If you think that if you just take your life, it will solve the problem, it won't. Jesus doesn't just come to remove depression, but he comes to remove despair, eternal despair, and particularly with the hope of salvation. Despair literally means the absence of hope or hope that is completely lost. You see, each one of us without Jesus in our life, we're in despair. Not only you might be depressed, but even if you're not depressed, without Jesus, you're in despair. You have no hope. There is an absence of any, any glimmer of light at the end of the tunnel. Because even if you leave this life without Jesus, despair is waiting at your door. Some people think that if they're a good enough person, that they will be able to bargain with God about whether or not they can make it into heaven. And some think that all paths lead to heaven, and others, they've developed their own standard of truth and their own law of morality. I want to read to you Romans 3.23. It says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And Hebrews 7.19 says this, For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, a better hope is introduced through which we draw near to God. A better hope is introduced. The light that we celebrate today is the better hope that was introduced to you and I to have a relationship with Jesus. Hebrews 7.22, accordingly, Jesus has become the guarantee of a better covenant. Because of Jesus, you and I have hope for eternity. There's not only light in the day that we live, but there's light in the eternity that we'll spend with the rest of our life. Amen? Amen. And the third thing that I want to remind you that Jesus has power over is the darkness of death. John 1, verse 4 through 5 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of of mankind and the light shines on in the darkness but darkness has not mastered it when you walk in Jesus you're walking in the light of life you see Jesus doesn't come like I said he's the sun he's the source he doesn't just come and get rid of the darkness he replaces it with the light of life where there is light Darkness can't be, and the light that's there replaces any, any space where there was darkness. You see, when you, when you receive Jesus into your life, he doesn't just bring, he doesn't just remove darkness and despair. He gives you life and more abundantly. John 10.10 10 says, the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. And 
It says, I have come so they may have life and have it abundantly. Acts 2.24, but God raised him up, having released him from the pains of death, because it was not possible for him to be held in its power. Jesus expels the power of darkness of death. It's impossible for death to have a hold on him. Each one of us who are here today, you might be wonder, you might be here today and and feel that you know what I'm I'm I really don't know if there's any reason or rhyme why I'm here. I came here because a family member brought me. I came here because this is what you do on Christmas Eve. It's the tradition that we have. But I want to tell you that the reason why you're here is because Jesus, he came in the form of man. He came humbly on the cross. He, or he came as a, as a small child to die on a cross. And he came to give life to you and I. He is the light of the world. He's the glimmer of hope. And for those of us who are in this room today who carry that light, understand that that light that each of us carry is causing every single one of your candles is like a representation of the light of Christ being lit all throughout the room. And the more that these candles get lit, the more that his light pushes back the darkness in this world. Amen.